Hello everyone, and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. In this video, I introduce the MiniQ Prime, or MiQ Prime for short, and it is derived from the MiniQ, which is derived from the MaruQ, and they are all Mars landers. They are all Mars landers with a specific feature in mind, and that is to have the ISRU, or in situ resource utilization unit, built in. That is, they can drill for their own fuel on Mars. And so we have the drills on the side, and one improvement to the Miku that we didn't see in the previous version was is that we have these recesses for drills, though ideally the drills would be form-fitting and wouldn't be getting in the way of the engine. So that's not great, but uh, you get the picture. It has the slots for the drills. And then an unpressurized bay. We don't want it to be pressurized, otherwise it'd be too heavy. Uh, so one of the benefits of the Miku Prime versus the Mini-Q is the Mini-Q was larger. It's uh, longer in particular. And also the Mini-Q was not uh, as efficient in space because I actually put the tanks in and we had these sort of um, braces and everything. And instead of having the tanks sort of like that, I've sort of built the tanks into the side of it and so you see the whole thing narrows here and then the tanks are just in the back so we don't have to have them explicitly like they were in the in the old mini queue also there was some dead space in front here that we weren't really using so i got rid of that mainly uh, getting rid of that dead space was what allowed me to shrink it and shrinking it means that its mass is more reasonable now uh, but Still, 50 tons, 51.758 tons, and then about 18 tons dry. Uh, the front portion, which is the cabin, is unchanged, and it's not as big as you might think it is. I seem to have mainly unstandard pods here, but here's the Mark 1-3 pod. Uh, so you can see, compared to the Mark one 3 pod, which is 4 meters in diameter in Realism Overhaul, uh, the front end really isn't that big. And so that is 4 tons right there. So it's it's still probably uh, heavy, but then we're also counterbalancing that with the ISR units in the back, and balancing this is a little bit of a trick, and I've played around with that a little bit. But anyway, uh, in fact, there's fuel along the sides in here. The cabin doesn't actually include these parts here on the sides, so there's a lot of stuff going on. But the uh, crew is not meant to sit in the cabin for a long time. I mean, maybe 14 days of work for a crew of four or a crew of three, but probably less than that. Mainly just to get them to the surface and then get them back into orbit around Mars again. And in order to do that, it has other special features, aside from the ability to drill for fuel. And those are the engines that turn. Unfortunately, in this version, compared to the mini Q, we have a different shape for the forward and rear engines. That's a little bit inconvenient. And I don't entirely like the piping, but it does allow them to extend beyond the body a little bit better. So they're like that. And so it lands like a dropship hopefully balanced. <laughs> um, uh, let's see actually, uh, let me turn off this engines in the back here too, so we need to turn those off. And we'll see where where the thrust is. Oh, no. There we go. Alright, everything's in line right now. Um, so, we'll see. We'll see whether it works out for us. But if we put some cargo in the back, we'll have to be careful about that. <laughs> we'll have to be careful about that. All right, so you get the picture. Um, it has one more feature, and that is that in order to lift off from the surface, instead of being in dropship mode, which would cause it to get a lot of drag, I don't know if this is necessary. It has to be in dropship mode in order to make the ramp work and for them to drive rovers in and out. So that's why it's like that. But if we want to launch, we can use these special skis, hopefully. And that can those can actually prop it up so that it can use its tail engines and just the rear set in order to launch. Incidentally, the engines in these pods are actually tilted out by 10 degrees. They're not straight back at each other. 
So that's important to note and hopefully we'll see that. In this video I'm just introducing it and we're going to do some basic tests. Tests. We're going to test the skis and we are going to test uh, the Kerbals getting in and out and we'll also test the plumes on the ground. So with that being the idea, uh, we'll do further tests in a subsequent video on Mars. So that'll be later. But let's just take it outside here on Earth and see how it does on these tests because I know Kerbals getting in and out is not trivial. It does have my standard EDB cabin IVA that I use for a lot of things including Shinkansen and all. And so uh, we, we sort of see where the windows ought to be uh, but we've got a more luxurious sort of window arrangement here. And so there's the tighter cabin. We've seen larger cabins. It's enough space for four to be seated. And um, in this case, because of the way it lands, the seating, seating in this way makes sense. And we've got the rest prop monitor stuff and all that business. So, okay, even a clock. All right, so that's all good. Now, um, let's see about getting Jeb out, so EVA. Now, EVA will be inside the body. That's why it's tricky. It's right here, holding on to the hatch. And just say, oop. So Jeb can just walk through here. Oh, this should have a, this should have a, whatchamacallit, collider on it. The collider doesn't seem to be working right. Um, can you get up there? Okay, climb. Okay, well, all right. So see, I need to fix something. Okay, grab and board. Okay, so that part works, but the ramp needs fixing. Okay, but let's close the ramp. Let me unthrust limit that. And let's turn these nozzles. I should have action grouped them. Okay, just testing the plumes. They're not going to be powerful enough to lift this off the ground on Earth. But you can sort of see these are tilted out like that. So that's fine. And actually the rear engines are tilted just a little bit to go through the center of mass because they're pretty low set. Okay. And... Skis. Lower gear. Hmm. Well, it sort of lifted the thing up a little bit, but then it flopped back down. Let, let me see what happens in lower gravity. I think on the Mario Q, I made the animation slower, and so maybe... I don't know if they're raised or not. Oh, I think they are. Okay. Um, let, let me see what happens. We could also test the engines by hacking gravity, too. But Mars gravity is 0.36. Oh, okay, okay. Um, yeah, it's a little bit vigorous. It's a little bit vigorous. So the skis uh, are actually Mars only, uh, as you can see. Doesn't seem like it can do it for Earth, but that's a little bit too quick. So I'm gonna have to slow that animation down. Uh, we've turtled it. Oh well. Okay. So back. Let's revert. So the rear engines are more efficient and they're built into the body and if we just have them being used, the delta V of this is 4650, which should be enough, but um, I guess my thrust limiting, right, okay, there we go. And uh, 0.87 thrust weight ratio is definitely enough for Mars. So actually, uh, even if we didn't have these firing on liftoff, it should be okay. The only problem is um, those are going to be right up against the ground. So might be a good thing, might be a bad thing. Probably a bad thing. <laughs> uh, we would like probably a platform on Mars to uh, launch and lift off of. Maybe I should just abandon the whole ski thing and just have it go drop ship like But transitioning from pointing horizontal to pointing vertical can be troublesome. Like, you know, 
uh, as we see with the Osprey and stuff like that. So we'll see. Anyway, so that is the Miku Prime, a smaller version of the Mini Q, and hopefully it'll be more usable and we'll see how it works on Mars. I mean, it has to be able to, we've got all the MLI layers on, but will it keep the methane and oxygen that uses from boiling off? Will we be able to do anything with it at all? I don't know. We'll have to see. Landing stuff in close proximity with each other on Mars is a whole other problem too. It's not as easy as on the moon because we've got the atmosphere to deal with. So, well, that is what the To Mars and Beyond series is all about. We're going to test this in sandbox. Well, To Mars and Beyond is also sandbox. We're going to test this on the side uh, and see how it does on Mars before sending it into the To Mars and Beyond series because then we're going to take a lot of time with it. So we'll... I'll probably do a video testing it first, and then we'll be seeing it in action in Tomorrow's and Beyond, hopefully. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.